Alrighty then, good evening. This is day four of Agile World. Yet again, Sabrina's put her hair in a ponytail, so can't put her cap on, so just to prove it is, you know, da, 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 da. So, right, so we've got the wonderful Shelby with us tonight. Yay! Four girls! <laughs> <laughs> we have to do a tally. If we the crowd goes wild! Yeah. <laughs> is, you've got the two now. Well, the car goes wild, or the or the crowd goes wild. The car the goes car... wild. Yeah. <laughs> so we, were just, we were just discussing a dilemma that we had last night. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it was like, yeah, what what you doing that? that it, it was just like three events I wanted to go to all at the same time. So all I did was close my eyes and go that one, and that's what I went to, right? Uh, and that's cool. I think you know that there's, there's a whole load of karma involved in in choosing events when they clash. I know previous when I've organised conferences, we purposefully put on events that are really interesting to clash, so people have to decide they have to make a, an actual decision to be engaged rather than just feeding at the trough of knowledge. Uh, it sounds like a terrible image, but you know what I mean. <laughs> Last night was interesting because it was between the wonderful Seth. The wonderful Carl. Carl. And who was the other one? So I want the other one I wanted to go to was Jonathan Smart and um, Miles Ogilvy and Sox Bernard, who I've previously worked with before in another organisation in an organisation actually. But I wanted to kind of go to that obviously to show support. But then I was like, well, I also want to show support to my fellow trustees and brothers and sisters. <laughs> and so what do I do? And like I'm like I'm wanting you and wishing you all put more double events in of all the same topics. I can go to all of them <laughs> at the course of the month. So this so is I know perfectly though, hasn't it? Because You've got one that you've been to, I've got an event you've been to, and Carl's got his event. Yes. <laughs> so, you know, I think we all cover it from all angles then. <laughs> yeah. I, I, the, I mean, the, the other thing is that the, I'm genuinely surprised about what I've managed to organise because I don't know any of these people. And therefore, um, it's, it's just total random stuff. It's kind of like going into a bar and ending the evening knowing everyone. Um, and that's and that was kind of like it was last night at the uh, Agile Populism talk, because the, one of the guys that I got to speak, I didn't realize this beforehand. He's an architect and not a, not a software architect. He's, he builds buildings yeah, sure uh, like a, re, a real architect. Sorry, that's going to upset a lot of people. You know what I mean? The architects that the existed before. Architect. Be, be, before everyone else took the terminology now everyone's an architect but anyway it was just really interesting because he's he's adopted agile and uh, he's using it in, wow. in his workplace and um you know wow. it's, and he gave a really good talk about it and uh in terms of and i've got my notes actually i should probably read my notes because they were, they were good notes at the time but you know when you go back and look at notes after you think what the hell was i thinking when i wrote that um i'll just i'll just let them load i'll use my phone it's easier but that's amazing though right because i think you know given in in, in four days and the many events that we've gone to the one thing i have really picked up on as a theme is that it, it is no longer just software right it is in across multiple organizations in multiple industries health yeah architecture as you just said you know yesterday in my talk they were talking about putting agile in schools like like junior schools and talking about how we should be agile with kids and, and like babies and, yeah and, and, i went to that one as well <laughs> and I know, i've done that and it works children yeah. love it i should be it's, super nanny you should but it's, it's it's and i think that's that's really fascinating for me and and curious to me because you know you you think you, you you taught it's IT and dev and in, in, in the standard first approach when you we were in it many years ago and now today when you look at it, the world it's sort of encroached on if me and maybe that's the wrong word but maybe you know it's softly gone into gently crawled into it I think it's an infiltration I think agile's infiltrating the world in a good way <laughs> in a good way yeah no in a good way oh yeah a good way yeah. but it's 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 the the point is that it's the way that humans learn they they see something that works and they try and adopt it into their ways of working their their yeah. practices and uh you know the only reason that agile still exists and 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 it's been there's been a few chances in the last 20 years for it to just be thrown away it's worth saying that yeah uh, the only reason it still exists is because it works now when i say it works 
the experiences that people have, have have made them think that it works relative to what they're trying to achieve. Does agile in its entirety work for everyone? I have no idea. But yeah. the bits that I've tried and that uh, have delivered value to my clients have worked. Ah, so yeah. I've got a question for people that watch this now. I'm quite interested because from what I can see and from my experience and from everyone I talk to, I don't think there's anything that out there that you can't use Agile. And I would be interested for somebody to actually comment on Yeah, challenge us. Challenge us, tell us. Yeah. Is there something? Because like I've mentioned previously before, I've Kanban children. Uh, we yep. Not just done it in IT. Carl met somebody that did it in actual architecture, just to confirm a, an architect, as Carl says, a proper architect. A real yeah. architect. Yeah. <laughs> like, a pro- but, like a proper person. A real a, being, real human. Is there anything that you can use Agile for? That's what I'd love to know. Yeah, and, and I think that would be a great challenge because then, like, as you just said, you, you, you use it with your children. I, I've planned a friend's wedding. I, I've... I've used it as hot for holidays i i can ban my husband without him know, knowing about it so, <laughs> <laughs> because, doesn't know. Oh. Yeah, because because it's like well these are my trick these are things i know so if i can you know i i suppose the, the good way of knowing that you can do something and it's seeded is by doing it without them knowing and they've done it and then you can go oh look but this is my evidence <laughs> 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 Quite He's not often. running around a little like uh, thing with loads of doors and things and moving. Never mind. Uh- <laughs> now, Carl, we need to write a book. How to Kanban your husband? Like your husband. We'd be able to retire. Every woman would try it. They were, yeah, but it does work. I, I'm not lying. I will. I, I I've got evidence it works because well, we're 21 years married, so it definitely works. <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's it's. I think any of it regardless of your, your flavor and i'm going to call it a flavor regardless of what you practice and preach or what you love love about that agile world something always applies to something and and you know whether that's taking it back and looking at all the principles and the values and, and all of that good stuff you can apply it somewhere and i think that's why many people love it and i would be very open to having a topic a conversation with somebody that can come out and go I use this and it failed dramatically because of X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, well, oh, fair enough. But I my evidence challenge that is a challenge. I'm lucky. My husband is a fellow agilist, so he's on board. And I think there was once that we actually worked in a company where I was his scrum master, and everyone turned around and said, "Oh, wouldn't it be a bit awkward having your wife as your scrum master?" And it's like, no, 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 it works. And we were like a different couple when we were in work. You know, he'd behave himself. He'd listen yeah. to me as a scrum master. We <laughs> the roles uh, were it's, the roles it's, were it's, it's all about priority then. No. I, I, so, so, my, so my wife is actually Sigma 6 oh, wow. trained. Jeez. And uh, so when she started training in it, I, and, I've been, and, and I've been doing um, uh, design for years. I'm, I'm from a design background. And she started talking about what she was doing. I said, yeah, you're talking about the design process. It's just been renamed something else. Yeah. So Sigma 6 is based upon the design process. And she said, well, when, when was that created? I said, well, the first writings about it were in the 11th century. So, yeah. <laughs> And that's actually, I think on the um, patrons talk, actually some of the patrons actually said that as well. Just because it's now been named this, it was mm. being done before in some other form or guise, you know, it was called something else. So people have utilized it and called it different, different things over the over the centuries but actually i think we could go way back yeah. when right back you know hundreds of years to see where all, all of it even the, the many frameworks will probably be in some different shape or size do you know and i and i'm sorry to run on i only think that the reason the 17 people were there on that day was because there there was a reason for it so something brought them together oh, they- <laughs> something brought up like on, on, on snowbird sorry something well no it's, it's serendipity isn't it it's, yeah. so bob, bob was saying last night there was meant to be a woman there but she couldn't get over there from the uk yeah. uh, and uh, so the, there was meant to be a woman there uh and it just didn't work out no. and i think that you know it's serendipity um do it, it but what he said that was really interesting. So Bob Payne uh says he's been doing agile for 21 years and everyone like goes wait a minute 
that, that's not possible. Agree, but yeah. but the thing, what you said is, agile is a conversation in time. Yes, I love that. Uh, and I thought that was really good because it's because agile and the seeds of agile happened in the nineties. Yes, the fact the manifesto was created uh, in 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 two thousand and one is you know a point in time it may not have, it could possibly have not survived except that it resonated already with people who were already going through problems related to how we work together so i think that that was that was really interesting from him and, and you know I, again i don't know who he, i didn't know who he was but he's he's apparently you know one of the gods of xp extreme programming um and it's just nice sorry you need to look this stuff up <laughs> well no I, the, the thing is that I'm, I'm interested in what people want to talk about rather than who they are now you know if it, you're if you if we predis, predetermine the outcomes before knowing what's possible then you never really allow people to evolve yeah. and um i just thought it was you know it's 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 a very creative way of thinking about running events but uh you know, we all might be talking about agile now, but actually, our passion is um, climbing or motorsports. Or and and when we put in to do a, a speaking event, we might say, "Well, I'm just really fascinated by coffee." Um, and you yeah. know, I think that 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 would be because that's that's a a pivot point that we can yeah. sort of interrogate a relative to the event. And yes. I just think that was really interesting uh, last night with the guys. And we actually, the conversation went on and on. And I stopped recording it after two hours. Wow. Um, and uh, we carried on for another half hour. And we're all now connected on LinkedIn. Um, and in fact, I gave a kudos um, award yeah, to this, this lady. Uh, and it, it, she, she's, she's not involved in Agile at the moment, but she wants to be. But she's got everyone trying to sell her courses. And... Um, you know, I in the UK, so she's based in Germany. So in Germany, you need certificates to get jobs. Yeah. Whereas in the UK, I've actually hired people who are just damn good communicators, and I've I've uh, upskilled them to become Scrum masters, and then yeah. later on they do the certifications. But the work that they did uh, before they got the certification was brilliant. I mean, I, I I was a Scrum master for six years before I became certified. And I I always you know. I, when I look back at my whole life and my career path, I always think I've been a, 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 um, a scrum master without even realising it. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I used to work with somebody that I used to organise their life. I used to facilitate all his meetings. I used to um, set them all up, organise them, communicate out to everybody, make sure people are attending. You know, they're, they're great attributes of a great, great scrum master. I mean, I run this, you, you know, organising events from somebody from two people up to two thousand people mm -hmm. they require certain skills to do that right yeah, yeah. It's and, a lot then, of patience yeah and they're, they're things that you think to yourself well well when you hear job descriptions now and I, i'm I, and this is why i'm talking about it because i'm writing the job description for a scrum master you know there's really great traits and then you recognize them in yourself and actually then you could pinpoint them to the, the frameworks and how what they are yeah i've had situations where um People have asked, like, do you know, I've looked at this, you know, I thought of maybe becoming a scrum master, but I'm not too sure if I've got anything on my CV that links up. Yeah. And yeah. Like, the first thing I always say to them is, every single thing you've probably done in your career somehow will link up to this yes. because it is that type of role. Yeah. yeah. So, so someone I, I, I contacted out of the blue and I, I, I'm not going to name her, but uh, she had been bullied by her manager and was actually in tears on the phone to me. And I said, well, can we get you a new job? Uh, and uh, she didn't have a scrub background. Uh, she said, well, how can I possibly do that? And I said, well, send me the CV that you done what what have you been doing what she'd done was she project managed uh the creation of an internal system that allowed them to book agency wow. staff to do things and i'm like going you're joking you have just built one of the most complex vendor systems and this is for a major major bank and you don't think you can be a scrum master uh you know and it, it, what what she needed was to learn the language it was the yeah. translation layer uh, yeah. That was the problem. But, you know, uh, and then she went, she's gone on now to be 
um, like PMO level. Uh, I know we don't really in, in Agile talk about PMO level, but you know what I mean. But what is that? Uh, it's still it, that. It, it, it's, it's, there is there there is that interface with governance that you have to have. Um, and so she's, yeah. But but that, you know she was she was literally destroyed by her previous manager who who spent you know she would go and ask for an upgrade in salary and end up apologising at the end of the conversation because the person was a manipulator, and then within a year and a half of her leaving, her boss was fired because she never did anything. Uh, she just she just relied upon my friend's uh, uh, um, desire to please, and I just think you know there's a lot of people trapped in really really crappy jobs with horrible bosses who basically uh, should stop thinking that they're bosses and get off their backsides and do some actual work. Anyway, <laughs> no, 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 that's um, rant for the evening. That actually, <laughs> yeah, no, but that actually is um, it's, it's very close to my heart because I've actually been there myself, so I know what that one feels like, right? And it is awful to be in that position, and especially when you, when the, that person that's telling you has no concept, has not Nothing. read a book, has not gone to a conference, hasn't gone out and got any train formal training, and then they proceed to tell you you're stupid or you don't know, and then. You're yeah. fight, you know, you can fight as a human being by default, you can fight for so long. And then at some point your brain goes, a, a trigger goes off because it goes, well, my trigger went off and went, well, I, they must be right. I must be stupid and I mustn't mm. know what I'm talking about. And what I've learned since that event is that to actually have something like the, so let's talk about a bit of imposter syndrome, to actually have that, mm -hmm. you've got to have the skills to have that. So you've got yeah. to have some yeah. kind of knowledge <laughs> And so, and that's what I, I fight and target within my brain sometimes. So I've got, I, I obviously have the skills to doubt myself that I've got the skills, which is what yeah. the process does to you. But I have been there where men, where people, men and women have told me, A, no, adult is stupid. No, you don't know what you're talking about. Or no, that won't happen in this organization. And I'm like, oh, okay then. And then I fought, tried to fight that. And then it takes its toll and you, you, you're either brave so enough to move on or you don't. So one of the things, so a long time ago, I did fencing and there's a move in fencing where like you drop your, yeah, with swords <laughs> yeah. uh, when I was at school, actually. And um, wait, there's a, there's a, a minute, I mean, just wait, you said not long ago and then you said in school. I was like, yeah, I, I said uh, a long time ago. In yeah, okay, I'm 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 a little bit older than you guys, so get over it. <laughs> anyway, um, there's always one. Uh, anyway, uh, so there's there's this fencing move where you drop your guard, uh, and you you look to see whether or not people will move within your striking zone, and so that's how I tend to do consultancy. Uh, I drop my guard. Uh, and, and follow the line that uh, let's see what they do. You know, I don't go in and tell people I can program in binary. I can. I just don't tell them. Hexadecimal, I've worked in mainframes and Unix. It's not on my CV. I've, uh, I've, I actually like programming in Prolog, and I've written two artificial intelligences you uh, for, for fun. <laughs> for fun. And this is the thing is, is, is technology is about uh, uh, interrogating what's possible, not just building products. Mm. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I've had people like, hey, I'm the head of this. You should listen to me. I know this, this. And I'm going, you know, I, I understand why you're saying that. But if we want to take this as a sidebar, I'll happily talk to you about it because I'm a fellow of the British Computer Society because I invented this and this and this and at least 10% of what you do for a living I created so have a little bit of respect for other people at which point they usually stop being bullies but yeah. you, you have to you've had to have to had 30 years of experience and um, the willingness to get fired <laughs> but I do also think that you know and I get that the organizations that we may go into have their own walls up because they've traditionally you know we go in and we challenge them in the ways that mm -hmm. they're thinking and working and actually that can rub people up really rub them up the wrong way because we're like well how dare shall be coming and tell me so this is amazing because i've been done it you know so that's their fear factor and so actually as you quite rightly said carl you've got to there's it's drop your guard to go mm -hmm. in a different way and i very much don't go in and say oh, well, I've done testing, or actually, yes, I can do dev for you, because that's down here for me. Yeah. It's on the peripheral. And 
if it comes up in conversation, then yeah, I, I can assist you with that. That's not a problem at all, right? I mean, yeah. We're all coaches here on the call, so we're quite lucky. Yeah. So the one thing that we have to do when we go in is be negotiators. I love, mm. I love like the hostage negotiation system. As well. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, it is, it is. We all get ourselves into that because that's what we're here for. We're here to be negotiators. We're here to, you know, create new environments, better ways of working, um, and do it in a kind manner as well. We yeah. If you think if we had a bruise for every time we got pushed back <laughs> and then pushed back and pushed back, and then we've had to push back against them, it's like a whole fisty cuffs, but... Yeah, we all love I, it. Really. We do love it, and and regardless of where I was in my my, my journey, I've also learned the lessons from that, and I've also mm-hmm. I take a lot away from that because that lesson has taught me then that actually no, I'm not standing for that, and my value mm-hmm. is this and this and this, and actually that's then you know this good old line around feedback that we we do and give. And, and we promote within the industry and, and in its many events and all, you know, the ceremonies we should, we should have. That actually should be contextualised sometimes mm-hmm. because actually if you're getting feedback from somebody like in my circumstance had no idea about Agile or its frameworks and it's telling me I'm wrong, then i got to take that with a pinch of salt because yeah. how can you tell me something you don't know about? But yeah, right. if, it was, if it was you, Carl, saying to me, Shelby, actually, darling, Shut up, go and do some knitting. Eh, I wouldn't put it that I, way anyway. <laughs> no, I know you wouldn't, but it's the context, right? You would, mm-hmm. you know, as a good coach, I would expect you to give me the right context and the, and the feedback you're giving me. So it, it's where it's also coming from. It's I, so, so, I found the communication, what? though, because I find yeah. nine times out of ten when I get a pushback from someone in leadership or all those people that do push back, I find nine times out of ten it's because they don't have the information. And the first thing I will come back with is provide them with the information. I provide them with, this is the reason why so, I'm recommending this. Go on, yeah. Carl, go for it. So the psychology of it is, is that people are defending themselves. So they're yeah. attacking uh, uh, because they don't know what to do next. But I, I, I actually feel sorry for them because they're trapped in their own heads with their own selves. Yeah. Uh, so I feel quite sad for them. But at the same time, my job is to support the whole team and not just one person so um you know and and to uh, enable the business and to facilitate customers to gain what they need so uh, we have multiple responsibilities i think the key thing here though is to is to point to the way out yeah Yeah, always give an exit and I'm smiling and grinning on this video like a Cheshire cat, everybody, because actually as a collective of people that have come together to support this festival, we've done that. I know I can come to you, Carl, for advice and support and training because I, I also have the respect for you as a human and my peer and the person that's been in an industry for hundreds of years. Same with you, Sabrina. And I can come to you and I can get support. And I know that you wanted to reach out to me. It, it, it would be, you don't need to, and you haven't, but you would get it, right? It's... We appreciate each other. Oh, I will respect. later on. Don't worry about it, love. I'll be on the phone you. <laughs> yeah, but there's, there's that respect for each other that we all have. And that's why I think then, back to the original point, that's why I think Agile works, because we take those values that we live we live by them. And so we fun. do live by them. They're so friendly. Yeah. They're friendly. Yeah. Come on. We love a good coach. We love a good banter. We love the people we work with. We're very celebratory. We love people, you know. Oh well, me and Sabrina might, but Carl. Hey. <laughs> no, Carl's Sorry, warming Carl. to people. Have you not noticed? I've been working on him. He's starting Carl, to uh, Carl is a <sighs> Carl is a better bear than he realizes. He's a very he, he he looks like a big bear, but actually he's a very soft bear. He's a soft puppy. You, you know, I only ever grew this to upset my mum. Um, oh, 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 oh. and then then my wife said she likes it so that's the reason i've kept it but well, apparently it, it makes me look uh, distinguished but uh you know it yeah. also helps me be lazy in the morning <laughs> i don't have that we don't have that problem well i might have that problem but not yet <laughs> <laughs> right. i'm not going to comment on that just under, we've got around about five minutes left. So next segment about some more about some of the events that we've been to. So Shelby, you went to a really, really good one last night. Oh my God. So I went to the lovely um, Sath Pal, Sath, our brother Sath, um, 
um or no it wasn't i lied to you and i just want to say it was the origins one which is this evening yesterday's was a talk with tobias mayer uh, lisa lisa atkins and joanna rothman um and talking about the agile, agile manifesto and should it change and so they came on and there was lots of good great questions around again what if women were there does it how does it support us now you know how do we change it what should we change about it should there be an uprising and hundreds of people march together to change it you know and and, and just different contexts in that and how actually we all have the power to to, to, to have an input into it i thought jo i mean joanna rothman just just she just blows my mind she's just i don't know she comes across as like a a, a, a mother christmas figure and she just yeah. radiates this information of knowledge and i sit there going uh, I have no <laughs> idea what you're talking about, and but I need to learn because you're just you blow me away. But Tobias Mayus was then talking around it at the manifesto as well, but actually then what it means and where we where it should should go. But then that's how we got onto the topic of how it manages, you know, it should be taught in schools and not universities, it should be taught in primary, junior schools, and that actually families can adopt something in from the agile realm. And that it should be sort of done from a human perspective on the on the bottom as we're born and move forward, and then that has the bigger consequence, the social impact of it as well. That it, we, it, you know, maybe then we would respect other, other cultures, nations, and different things like that. It just went, it was just expansive. The conversation was very expansive in the end. Went from tiny children right to like world saving peace. It was awesome. It was just awesome. I should awesome have that one. <laughs> so, so I, I thought that the the guys last night were great but the audience was brilliant um <gasps> and uh yeah. one of the one of the, the the people in the session i hosted uh, a, a lady called lenore brackman said i think agile exists the way clouds exist always in change always in motion formed oh. by the environment yeah. around and i just thought that is just beautiful um that. and that's really beautiful yeah show. so that's uh, sorry get her on the show yeah I'll, I'll, I'll see if i can contact her through linkedin it's it's it you know there, it was such a lovely conversation and uh there was so there was a lot of angst around having to do certain things to be involved with agile and actually as we all know agile comes from a desire for better Yes. um and not not a desire for uh different hats um so i think uh, it was so much fun um and I, i've got you know contacts now that if they need help from me then i can ask and if i need help from them they uh, i will ask yeah and, I, and that, that connection sorry sabrina cut right no, across you my friend but that connection, right? Having a conversation with somebody that you probably would know, that's what this festival has done, is connect and afforded us really great connections with people. Like, I've got a meeting with April Jefferson. She put an hour in my diary. And I'm like, <laughs> you what? You, like, she yeah, put it in my diary, not me asking her. Mine. And I was like, what do I do with this? I still haven't processed it. I, but well, I, think, I, I think Sabrina wants to come along. Um, <laughs> I love her. She's Oh, oh, like, she's like a agilist God, she, poet. She is yeah. like a goddess. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Bring me to the ballroom and, and you're free. Um, her, and <laughs> her and Joanna Rothman, you know, they, that's that's the feeling you get. But that's a connection, Carl, and that's the connection that you've yeah. got then with that person by saying a simple statement. And I think that's the power, also one of the powers that this festival has brought. But Agile in general brings that that kind of power and influence in, right? I, th I think it can once we step step away from the commercial. I think that's yeah. the thing is 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 you know the the thing that we've all fed on and and uh, pretty much hated for about the last fifteen years is commercialization that has told us that we need to be enemies with each other, which is wrong yep. because actually no you know i've never worked in a team where one person delivered anything yep it's a collective yeah. it's always a collective and i'm gonna swear and without all these bollocks of what certificate you should get and not get for god's sake talk about creating a bloody divide i mean 
you know, by it, it, you know, you are very much in the camp that you feel like you've got to go and do it, otherwise you, you have no credibility. And actually, for me, that's a lot of rubbish. Right. I think this is a, that's a whole other conversation because it's so, so deep with about the certification route. I think I think that's cultures though as well because in yeah, in yeah. in Holland and in Germany you have to have certificates to do stuff yeah. and and that's yeah. that was always there. It's not just about agile; it's about everything. Um, but I always I always remember when I was hiring in Accenture and I hired hundreds of people in Accenture and uh, you know half the certificated people were just terrible. They didn't understand. They hadn't actually taken the knowledge and interpreted it and and owned it. And actually, you, you need those people who can understand and not just uh, talk uh, from the syllabus. Right. I'm going to have to cut in now. It's been absolutely <gasps> amazing. The conversation's been great. But we're out of time, ladies and gents. Um, <laughs> thank that you was so quick. Much, you have been absolutely awesome. Um, I love you um, both. Aww. <laughs> have a cut. Big have a big cut. Cuddle. <laughs> right well that's the end of tonight's show thank you very much please comment below and we are very very keen to find out what industry have you been in where agile does not work not because it's been pushed back it just does not work so yeah. comment on the link below for us thank you thanks